Brain-machine interfaces are an emerging field at the intersection of neuroscience and engineering. A major motivation for this research is to build neurally controlled prosthetics to improve quality of life for amputees and individuals with paralysis. For these patients, signals in the brain that would ordinarily control arm movement are unable to get to the muscles. However, we can record these signals directly from the motor cortex and decode them using an algorithm that translates neural activity into the movement of a computer cursor or robotic arm. In this manner, a patient will be able to naturally control a prosthesis. We are PhD students in the Stanford Neurosciences program. Building better neural prosthetics requires a deeper understanding of the basic science of how the brain controls and coordinates muscles to produce complex movements. To study this, we record the activity of neurons in motor cortex of rhesus macaques doing an arm-reaching task. One exciting line of our current research is to explore the relationship between planning and executing a movement. Current neural prosthetics do not take this into account. So what happens in your brain before and during an arm reach? Imagine, for example, a climber reaching for a handhold. As the climber makes a reach, his motor cortex must coordinate the different muscles in his arm and hand. If we record from a single neuron, we can see the neuron change its firing rate as the muscles activate. Here, we've shown the activity of a single neuron, but it's currently the future, so we can use an array of electrodes to record from hundreds of neurons simultaneously. To visualize this data, we represent a single moment in time as a point in a coordinate system where each axis represents the firing rate of a single neuron. We can then look at how this neural state evolves in time over the course of a reach. In order to make a quick and accurate reach, your brain benefits from having time to plan the movement. When a climber plans a reach, neurons change their activity and bring the system to what we call a plan state. The plan state is different for different movements. If neural activity is in the correct plan state, then reaches can be initiated faster. But what happens if you don't have time to plan the reach or need to change the plan suddenly? For instance, if the climber has prepared to reach for the high hold above him, but all of a sudden has to make an unplanned reach for the closer hold to his right when his foot slips. Does the neural state have to pass the rightward plan state before executing the rightward reach? Or does the neural activity go directly into the rightward reach trajectory? We designed an experiment which tested these two alternative hypotheses. We were surprised to find that the neural state did not have to pass through the plan region corresponding to a particular movement. Although the reaction time to make this rushed movement was a bit slower, it otherwise looked identical to the planned movement. This result challenges our understanding of the role of motor planning. We hope that by better understanding how the planning activity relates to movement, we can improve the speed, accuracy, and reliability of neuroprostheses.